You are listening to a Redeemed Christian Fellowship podcast produced by Hearing Heart Multimedia in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope this message is an encouragement to your faith and brings insight through the Word of God in your pursuit of God's perfect plan for your life. Please find us online and social media at Redeemed Christian Fellowship for additional broadcast and ministry resources. Well, hello. Thank you for um, joining us on our weekly podcast. We're so glad that you are enjoying your commute, doing house chores, whatever it is that you do when you listen to this podcast. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and start with prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time that we can learn, Lord, about your redemptive names. We're so grateful, Father God, for the revelation, for the anointing on your word. We thank you, Lord, um, that you are working miraculously in the lives of your people. And we just love you. We praise you. You give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're continuing our podcast teaching on the redemptive names of God. And just to recap a little bit, we talked about how in, his, in God's redemptive relationship to man, he has compound names which reveal him as meeting man's every need. Every need that we have, will ever have, God meets those needs, has met those needs. Actually, the name Jehovah or Yahweh by itself is the proper name of the one true God. It means existing one, self-existent, eternal. I am that I am and signifies uh, to be. In other words, I, I will be all that I will be. God will be everything he needs to be in our lives when it comes to our redemption or anything that we need and um, I'm going to be throwing a lot of scriptures uh, at at you guys today but you know you can never get too much word and what better way to say what I want to say than through scripture and I'm letting in scripture interpret scripture because this isn't about me just sitting here talking about my own you know thoughts and experiences I want to give I want to you know talk about the word and and what um what these names mean scripturally. And last week we looked at um, Jehovah Shama or Shama. Uh, I'm, I, I think it's Shama. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, uh, which means the Lord is there. You know, his presence is always here all around us. We can't escape his presence. Isn't that awesome? We can't escape his presence. Kind of like we can't escape his love. And Jehovah Shalom which is the Lord our peace. And I'm not going to go into the details of those. You'll have to listen to last week's podcast. But this week, we're going to um, look at Jehovah Sidkenu. And hopefully we can get to Jehovah Rapha. I'm pretty sure we will. Um, But Jehovah Sidkenu is uh, basically the Lord our righteousness. And this name speaks of a future Davidic king, who is Jesus and who would lead his people to justice and uprightness or right standing. Jeremiah 23, five through six, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called, he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Now, in verse 5 of Jeremiah 23, that word branch is in reference to a, a branch, like a, a growth. Um, but more specifically, it's a metaphor for the lineage of David. So think of, you know, a branch on a family tree. And it is a, it is a Hebrew word pronounced samak. I don't know what the spelling is, but you look at the spelling and you pr- probably wouldn't know how to pronounce it. So I'm just giving you the pronunciation of it is samak. But that word branch and and the word king, for that matter, in verse 5 is capitalized, signifying a proper noun. Now, if we remember our grammar rules back in, you know, grade school, when, you know, a word is capitalized, it means a proper noun. So Jeremiah here is prophesying about, you know, a righteous branch, capital B, um, and a king, capital K. Because he's talking about the coming Messiah, who is Jesus. This isn't speaking of just a regular person, like, you know, oh, oh, like a man is coming, lowercase m, man is coming. Uh, No, this is a righteous branch. So there's a proper noun, a proper name to this branch. It is Jesus. It It is the Messiah. Because it's coming from David's 
lineage, lineage, excuse me, Jeremiah is naming someone specific here. Okay. And in verse six, it says that he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness, which is the Hebrew compound word or name Jehovah Sidkenu. It's spelled T-S-I-D-K-E-N-U, which the English spelling of it. And again, we're talking about compound names. And remember, you know, compound names or, you know, words, it's two words with separate meanings that work together, join together to make another word with a different meaning. Remember that the example that we talked about was grandparent. So grand means one thing, parent means another, but you bring grandparent together and it's another meaning altogether. It's a whole new word. Um, so that, again, we're talking about Jehovah being, you know, I am the eternal one, self-existing, and the word righteousness, the Lord, our righteousness, that word samak. In verse six, Um, oh sorry let me go on to the next scripture I got a little distracted sorry about that in the next scripture that we're covering is Jeremiah 33 14 through 16 and this is out of the Amplified I'm going to be jumping back from King James to Amplified which I, I do anyway but just so you all know behold the days are coming says the Lord when I will fulfill the good promise I have made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah in those days and at that time will I cause a righteous branch again capital B and in the Amplified it actually says the Messiah it amplifies that name branch as the Messiah to grow up to David and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land in those days Judah shall be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell safely and this is the name by which it will be called the Lord is our righteousness our rightness our justice that's how the Amplified um, elaborates on that name the Lord is our righteousness he's our rightness he's our justice the Lord is your justice amen <laughs> the words righteousness and righteous there in verse 15 in Jeremiah 33 are a Hebrew it's, it's a Hebrew word the same Hebrew word and get this it means justice righteousness in the sense of God's attributes and we know God's attributes truthfulness ethically right vindicated and justification doesn't that sound a little bit like redemption to you? I think so. There's the name Jehovah Sidkenu again in verse 16. So we're looking at, so we just looked at some examples, not examples, scriptures in Jeremiah 33 that name Jesus as, you know, the Lord our righteousness. But now let's transition over to the New Testament because we always want to make sure that scripture is interpreting scripture. And what better way for scripture to interpret? to interpret scripture than to go from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Because this is where we start talking about, you know, the New Testament, the New Covenant, the promises that we as believers have the, that are based on, you know, better promises because of the blood atonement. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Romans 3, 21 through 26 in the Amplified. And this is a long portion of scripture. Like I said, I'm throwing a lot of scriptures at you, but it is good. But now the righteousness of God has been clearly revealed independently and completely apart from the law, though it is actually confirmed by the law and the words and writings of the prophets. Now, didn't we just read in Jeremiah 33 and, uh, was it 20, 33 and 23, that, you know, Jesus is, you know, the Messiah is being prophesied. So the prophet Jeremiah, he's, those are his words. He's confirming that what Romans 3.21 is saying. Go on to verse uh, 22 in Romans 3. This righteousness of God, comes through faith in Jesus Christ for all those Jew or Gentile and we're the Gentiles um, who believe and trust in him and acknowledge him as God's son there is no distinction since all have sinned and continually fall short of the glory of God and are being justified declared free of the guilt of sin made acceptable to God and granted eternal life as a gift by his precious undeserved grace through the redemption, the payment for our sin, which is provided in Christ Jesus, whom God displayed publicly before the eyes of the world as a life-giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation by his blood to be received through faith. Wow, I'm not done. This was to demonstrate his righteousness, his righteousness, which demands punishment for sin because in his forbearance, his deliberate restraint. I love how the Amplified explains that forbearance that God has, his deliberate restraint. 
In other words, we're not getting the punishment that we deserve. He is deliberately restraining himself. It's like a parent, you know, you give your kid, you know, chance upon chance and you're just like, I'm not going to spank you this time. But man, <laughs> I sometimes wonder if that's how God sees us. Like, I'm not going to spank you this time. No, anyway, sorry. I'm I'm breaking. Uh, I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, uh, what was it? I'm going on a rabbit trail. Um, because of his forbearance, his deliberate restraint, he passed over the sins previously committed before Jesus' crucifixion. Verse 26, here we go. It was to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so that he would be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus and rely confidently on him as Savior. Wow, that is a mouthful. Now, or scriptureful, I should say. That was taken out of the Amplified, obviously. But that word righteousness in verses 21 and 22 is a Greek word because, again, we're, now we're transitioning to the New Testament, so now we've got to look at the Greek definitions versus the Hebrew. But it's a word that means rightness, justice or justified, virtue, correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting, and being in a state approved by God. We are positionally righteous. We are approved by God. We are in right standing with him. We are justified. We are vindicated. Why? Because of the work Jesus did on the cross. And this righteousness, this justification only comes to those who believe or have faith as stated in verse 22 of Romans 3. 2 Corinthians 5.21 He made Christ who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that in him we would become the righteousness of God. That is, we would be made acceptable to him and placed in a right relationship with him by his gracious, loving kindness. There's that same word again, righteousness, in 2 Corinthians 5.21 that we saw in Romans 3. So if we compare the word righteous or righteousness in the Old Testament and the New Testament and the prophecy of the coming Messiah or branch of David, Jesus is our righteousness, the Lord our righteousness. He is Jehovah Sidkenu. He became all of the sin and the guilt. He took on the punishment through the blood atonement. We were made righteous and we were given that right standing with God. So just like last week, we looked at Jehovah Shalom, God is our peace. And he is only our peace because of the blood atonement, revealing again Jehovah Sidkenu is yet another redemptive name. He, through that redemption, we are in right standing with God. We are made acceptable to God, right? And it's nothing that we can do on our own. It's every, everything that Jesus did was so that we wouldn't have to, to strive for that righteousness because naturally speaking, fit, well, there's no way we could do it on our own. There's no way. That's why Jesus had to die. That's why that blood had to be shed so that we could be positionally in right standing before God. Just again, uh, in Hebrews 53, 5, or Isaiah 53, 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. The punishment required for our well-being, our peace, our righteousness even fell on him. Our right standing with God is one, just one of the benefits of our redemption. That's powerful. <laughs> um, so now that we've, so we've talked about Jehovah Sid Canoe, that, that was, wow, <laughs> that was just amazing. Let's go on to Jehovah Rapha, R-A-P-H-A, which is the Lord, our physician, the Lord, our healer. Wow. I know I keep saying, wow, but come on, we're talking about God here. We're talking about his redemption. And Jehovah Rapha is actually a name that God spoke of himself in Exodus 15, 26. If thou wilt di diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now there is that name, Lord, Jehovah, or Yahweh, and the word healeth thee, that, that phrase, uh, the word healeth, um, is the Hebrew word Rapha, which means physician. It means to mend. It means to cure, to heal to make completely whole or to repair. Now, when you take your car to the, to the mechanic, right, you don't want him to do a partial repair. You don't, you know, if you've got bad brakes or whatever, you want him to replace everything. The brakes, the, 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 the rotors, you don't want him to do just one brake and then and be done because your car is not completely repaired. You want that car to be in better running condition than it was, you know, before you brought it into the mechanic or better. Um, you know, you don't want, uh, you know, 
half a carburetor. I, I'm not a mechanic. I don't know anything about cars, but I'm just trying to make a point. Um, I'm not here to talk about carburetors or, or transmissions or anything. But if, if you think about it in that respect, though, you go, you take your car in to get fully repaired, especially if you're going to pay the kind of money you got to pay to get it fully repaired. Um, but in the same way, that's how God is with us. He makes sure that when he heals us, that we are fully healed. We are full. We are whole. We are fully repaired. We are better than we were before than, than before. Amen. Uh, this is, you know, he, he's the same God who makes us completely whole in Exodus 15, 26, God, 1526 God is calling himself Jehovah Rapha he's saying I am the great physician I'm the one who's going to heal you and if we look at the scripture from last week remember when uh, in Exodus 6 3 when God said you know to Moses to Abraham Isaac and Jacob they they knew me as God Almighty El Shaddai but my but by my name the Lord Jehovah the redemptive name of God I did not make myself known to them in acts and great miracles one of God's greatest acts and miracles is that of healing because how can you explain a disease, whatever it is? It, it, it doesn't. It, it can be a headache. It could be allergies. It could be, um, you know, a, a, an organ that's failing. How do you explain diseases like that that just go away? How do you explain organs that repair themselves? How do you explain people being raised from the dead? Because there are accounts of that. I mean, obviously we have Jesus who was raised from the dead, which is a miracle. But healing is a miracle. And he's telling the children of Israel that not one of those diseases is theirs because he is Jehovah Rapha. And, and, and there's even diseases that aren't named because this was, you know, we're talking way back then and in Deuteronomy 28, you know, all the, you know, diseases or categories of diseases are listed. It even says in uh, verse 61 that every sickness and plague not written in the book. In other words, we are healed from every disease known and unknown to man. I mean, if we look at, at the last few years, you know, there have been, you know, viruses, variants of, of a virus, you know, and those were not known to man. Uh, you know, whatever the origin of the, that disease was, that virus was, we are healed from it as Christians. Why? Because he is our healer. He is Jehovah Rapha. Psalms 105, 37, he brought Israel forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. He, he not only made them rich, but he healed them. If you look at that word feeble, it means to stumble. It means weak. It means to, to bring injury to. It means weakness of the legs. It means wavering. And think about this. There was not one feeble person among the children of Israel when God brought them out. But these were slaves. And they had been working their bodies their entire life beyond what could be, what should be reasonable right for for someone who works in the fields or or you know um god said in exodus chapter 3 uh the affliction the suffering the desolation of his people who are in egypt he had heard their cry because of their taskmasters the oppressors egypt right he knew their pain and suffering these people were were bent over they had bad backs you know their bodies were in terrible condition i mean my goodness i work out for two days in a row and i can barely get out of bed the next morning these people all their lives were were oppressed by the taskmasters it worked more so than like i said what was reasonable um but yet this entire nation came out of egypt and not one feeble person was among them <laughs> i mean come on that is a miraculous healing of an entire nation we're talking millions of people here not just a you know a group a small group. this were millions of people who were prosperous loaded down with the riches of egypt and they were all restored made whole they were completely repaired of all that history all that time working their bodies to the bone they were ex they were made whole amen because he jehovah rapha redeem them. That's, that's miraculous to heal an entire nation of people like that. And what's awesome is that promise, that applies to us too. We have the great physician in Psalms 103.3, who forgiveth all thine diseases, who healeth, Rapha, all thy diseases. Psalms 143.3, Seven three, he healeth Rapha the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. You don't have to have a physical ailment. Your heart can be broken. 
You can be in emotional distress and he's still going to heal you that way. He's going to heal you emotionally, mentally, not just physically. In, in Psalms 107.20, he sent his word and healed Rapha, them, and delivered them from their destructions. Now, of course, God in the New Testament, he sent his living word. Amen. Jesus to heal us. And there were many, 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 many miracles that Jesus did for, you know, in, in, in regards to healing. And even his disciples performed those same, you know, same acts of healings afterwards because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I got to bring it back to Isaiah 53 because I just got to. <laughs> uh, Isaiah 53, 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Rapha. English Standard Version says, Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. Now, before you say, oh, that was just Old Testament stuff. No. 1 Peter 2.24. There's New Testament now. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross willingly offered himself on it as on an altar of sacrifice so that we might die to sin becoming immune from the penalty and power of sin don't you love that becoming immune to the penalty and power of sin and the sin nature the influence of it and live for righteousness oh there's that word righteousness for by his wounds you who believe have been healed through the blood atonement we have the miracle of healing because of Jehovah Rapha. And 1 Peter 2, 1 Peter 2, 24, that puts it in the past tense. We have been healed. We're not, you know, it's not you are going to be, you might be, eventually you will be healed. You have been healed. And I know that's easier said than done for me, for me to say that, but you know, this takes, and I'm not here to talk about, you know, uh, the trials of your faith because, you know, a uh, pastor has been teaching an excellent uh, uh, teaching on how to overcome. And this is certainly how you overcome by faith. And it does take time. But the point is you have been healed. There's no reason for us to struggle uh, physically with anything because we have Jehovah Rapha. We were, we were given that um, not just right standing with God. We were given that healing as part of the blood atonement. Amen. Well, I am done for now. We're going to, we still have some more names to cover, but I think that's enough for, for you all to chew on and, and meditate on. Go back, look at those scriptures. I, I encourage you to do that. Um, so uh, thank you so much for, for listening, for tuning in, for watching on YouTube. We just, we love you and we hope that you are experiencing God's redemption every day of your life. Love you.